Thank you for our live stream. Thank you for your patience. Uh, we had some technical issues that we had to go deal with very quickly. And so we're back in the book of Revelation. It is today, Tuesday, September 15, 2020. Um, 16 years ago, this was a very interesting evening 16 years ago in my life and my family's life and our church family's life. Uh, we were called to the hospital uh, because my father's blood pressure had begun to drop and uh, they thought that uh, life was leaving him. So we were there at his bedside, and uh, when I got into the room, they had given him some type of medication earlier, I guess, and his tongue was swollen, and it was difficult for him to speak. He says to me, so what are you doing here? Now, it was a Wednesday, and he knew what day it was, so his mind was sharp. It was nothing of that nature. His mind was sharp. He knew what was going on. He asked me, what was I doing there? I told him, I said, I came to see my best member. He said, you the pastor, go to church. And I said, yes, sir. And um, I left the hospital, went to Bible class. And on the next day, which was Thursday, September 16th, he passed away at the age of 84 years. So the Lord is good, and here I am, 16 years later, still the pastor, and we're having Bible class. <laughs> and I thank God for my father. I thank God for his legacy. I thank God for what he put in me in terms of loving the word of God. And I want St. Samuel Temple to love the word of God. If you love the word of God, you're not going to have the kind of problems in your life as someone who doesn't even know God or, or love his word. You know, there are people that are saved and they don't read their Bible and study their word like they should. And they're always reaching out to someone for help with their problems and always looking for somebody to <clears throat> counsel them and guide them and lead them. But the word of God is a guide. The word of God, it will lead you into all truth. You know, it's it's the Holy Ghost in us. It will lead you to scripture. It will lead you to the word to find. And, and we really need to get into God's word. I want to share with you some things because in order to open up chapter 6, uh, we have to set a timeline. It needs to be established. So those of you who are on Zoom and those of you on the live stream, I hope you have your pen and your paper so that you can write some of these scriptures down. We're going to the book of Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. Because this is going to help us set the timeline for chapter 6. Daniel 9. We're going to begin reading at verse 24. And when you have it on Zoom, you can... Give me a thumbs up or a hand wave or say amen. Amen. I want to know that you're involved. I hope you have your Bibles with you because I can see you. So I can tell whether you're looking at a Bible or not. God bless. Amen. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Daniel chapter 9 verse 24 says, 70, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks. Let me read that part again. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks. 
and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. Verse 26. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The 70 week timeline. Uh, if you read your Bible, if you even go on the internet, if you have historical books, there's a timeline. It's called Daniel 70 Weeks. The 70 week timeline is a calculation of years using a formula of one week representing one year. So really what we're looking at is 70 years of weeks. So if you do the math, 70 weeks of years, you take the number 7, which is 7 days in a week, and you multiply it by 70, and you should get 490 years. All right? So Daniel's talking about a 490-year period of time. Verse 25 states that an order will be given to rebuild Jerusalem, which occurred in the days of Nehemiah and Ezra. This order was given by Cyrus, king of Persia. The clock essentially starts counting at that point until it reaches the other bookmark, which is Messiah, the prince. Seven weeks of years is 49 years. Add to that 62 weeks of years, which is 434 years, for a total of 483 years. I'm going to read that again. Seven weeks of years. Because if you remember in verse 25, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks. Seven weeks. All right? That's a 49-year period of time. All right? And then he says, after be three, another three score and two weeks, which is... 434 years, you add the two, you get 483 years. So from the going forth of building the temple or the, the command to build the temple up until Jesus came, you have 483 years. All right? Everybody with me? Nod your head. Yes? No? All right. Mind you, the full determination is 70 weeks of years, totaling 490 years, leaving one week, one week unaccounted for. Something major occurs after the 69th week is reached. Verse 26 states, the Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. Who then for? Isaiah 53 and 3, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So Isaiah lets the people know. Some 700 years before Jesus came, that when he was wounded, when he was chastised, when he was bruised, it was going to be for us. Daniel, who has this revealed to him, is told through revelation that the Messiah would be cut off, but not for himself. So you take Isaiah and you take Daniel and you put them together, you now have Jesus Christ being crucified, but not for anything he did wrong, 
but for our sins, for our sins, all right? So that was the major event that caused a break in the 70 years, I mean, the 70 weeks of years or the 490 years. So you got 483 years and then Jesus is crucified, all right? The last week of years, also known as Daniel's 70th week, I believe is upon us. Much of it will be the work of the Antichrist. If you read Daniel chapter 11, verses 21 through 45, you can get some clarity on the work of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. But let's look at chapter 12, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. Uh, we all know that Michael is the archangel. He is one of the highest ranking angels in heaven. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Verse 3, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. The revealer, which was another angel, and you might remember, well, if you've read the book of Daniel, you'll remember how Daniel was fasting and he was praying and he was seeking God for an answer and, and, and looked like the answer wasn't coming. And then the angel finally shows up and he says, listen, God heard you when you first prayed and he sent me with the answer, but I had an altercation, a conflict. The prince of Persia, demonic forces came out against me and delayed me. And what would have gotten to you right away took 21 days to get to you because I was fighting with this demonic principality. Uh, which lets me know. Now, now you got to remember something. In Ephesians chapter 2, uh, it talks about the prince of the power of the air. So Satan's influences and his power structure is at a uh, in-between level between us and God. So this angel's coming to bring Daniel an answer, and he encounters those demonic forces on his way to Daniel, and he needed help. He needed some help. Anybody remember what I'm talking about? He needed some help. And the Bible says that Michael came and helped him. And when Michael came and helped him, it allowed him to get free, to go and give that word to Daniel. All right? And so he's who I'm referring to as the revealer. All right? So it says that in this particular time, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, it says there's going to be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. It says, and at that time thy people shall be delivered Everyone that shall be found written in the book. So now that's a very important thing. You want your name written in the book. The Lamb's book of life. All right. It says, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. There's going to be a resurrection, a resurrection unto everlasting life or to everlasting punishment. Verse three again. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And then they turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Let's look at Daniel chapter 12, verse 6 now. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? Verse 7, and I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river. When he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven 
and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. This is Daniel talking. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Verse 9, and he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Verse 10, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked <clears throat> shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Verse 11, and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that make it desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Verse 12, blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days or one thousand three hundred and thirty five days. All right. From these verses, we receive warning of the catastrophic events or wonders that will occur. A question was asked concerning the length of time involved. The angel lifts his hands towards heaven and declared a time, which is one year, a time. Then he says times, which is two or more years, and and half, which is a half a year. So time, times, and a half. Time, times, and a half. That's all total three and a half years. Keep in mind, a biblical year is 360 days, 30 days for every month. Unlike our years, we use a Gregorian calendar. So you have 31 days in some months, you have 28 days in one month. And every four years, you have 29 days in that month. Then you have 30 days in some month. But in the Hebrew calendar, it's 30 days every month. So you have 360 days. So we know the number more specifically. He says in that verse, uh, 1,290 days. That works out to about three years and seven months. All right, so just just about right at three and a half years, just in a month. All right, he says something interesting in verse twelve. Survivors will be those who make it one thousand three hundred and thirty-five days. That's an additional month and a half, another forty-five days. In other words, if you can survive through the one thousand two hundred ninety-day period and make it to the 1,335-day period, you are blessed. You are a survivor. That's how catastrophic this time is going to be upon the earth. So here we are now. I said all of that. I read and wrote all of that to build up to the beginning of chapter 6. Thank you to the lady behind the camera, Minister Kista Patterson. Ooh, and it's sweet, sweet, sweet. It's stevia. Yeah, too sweet for me. You know, I drink my tea now with nothing in it. No sugar, nothing in it. Amen. <laughs> I want the purest of the tea. Amen. But I need a little bit of something to coat my throat, so thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear. Ah, uh, Revelation, y'all ready? Let's go. Revelation, chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw. When the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. The first seal is opened very dramatically. As soon as it was opened up by the Lamb, and you remember I showed you all my scroll last week? My scroll. And so the scroll that the lamb is opening up. It had seven seals on the back. And those seals would unloose an event. So 
he opens up the first seal. And when he opens it up, it begins to thunder, a sound of thunder accompanied the seal being opened. And one of the beasts from chapters 4 and 5 invited John to come and see. Now, now there's some theologians out there, there's some folk out there that differ about who was being invited to come and see. Well, we know it wasn't Jesus. He was the one opening up the seal. So, then somebody said, well, it wasn't John because he already saw. But watch this. Have you ever seen someone opening up a package, but you still didn't know what was in the package? So you actually had to come closer to where they were so you could see their movement, but you still don't know what's in the box. Many times we have packages and bags and whatever, and, and there's all this wrapping and stuff inside of it or things put inside of it, and you got to go through all of that to get to what's really in there. So the beast says to him, come and see. He can see the lamb opening the seal, but now what the seal is revealing, he needs to step a little bit closer so that he can see it. So what does all this mean? So uh, we should read this more clearly as come closer and observe what transpires. All right? Come closer and observe what transpires. Verse 2, and I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. These uh, are very important notes to make. There are those who identify the rider of the white horse as Christ Jesus simply because of the white horse. The white horse is symbolic of a conquering warrior, which Jesus is in fact. But this rider has a season in which to operate and is given power to do so. Furthermore, Note the weapon this rider has, a bow, a bow, you know, a bow, as opposed to Christ who carries a two-edged sword. This rider is more in line with the Antichrist, given the events that are to follow. So the rider on the white horse, I believe, is the Antichrist. And we know that when he comes, even though he may come as a peacemaker, his real intent is to get all authority and rule under him in the earth. And in order for him to do that, he's going to have to do some fighting. He's going to have to conquer and subdue those nations that don't want to automatically come under his rule. All right? So he's been given his power to do so. All right? Verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that set thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. The opening of the second seal released a red horse. This horse and rider represents bloodshed through war and violence. The orchestrated conflict via military influence or the intimidation of gang violence running rampant in our communities. We can no longer study this book and apply its meaning to earlier centuries and events. Yes, Constantine was a relevant figure as well as Hitler in their days. But in light of what we're facing today, Revelation is playing out right in front of us. So you're talking about a red horse, meaning war and violence. Look at what's going on in our world and in our nation. There's violence and war going on in the world. Civil war, there's still nation against nation. You know, you still have the Middle Eastern conflicts going on. There's still conflicts going on on the African continent. There's conflict going on. We're not in a civil war in America, but yet there's still people dying on a daily basis not through some sickness, but through violence, violent, uh, irreprehensible acts. People are just going down the street spraying bullets, talking about turf wars and all this kind of thing. 
We don't own anything. We didn't bring anything in this world, and we're not going to take anything out. And yet, what little we do have, somebody through violence wants to come along and take it from us. I was looking at the news earlier after, after the fasting time. I turned on the 6 o'clock news, and they were showing these robberies that have been happening on certain communities, and they had on camera these, they saw these young men are going, going up on these women and taking their belongings from them. All these kinds of things going on in our streets, in our communities. Killings at the hand of law enforcement officers. Law enforcement officers being killed at the hands of others. In-home abuse, domestic violence, domestic abuse. Children being killed. All this kind of thing. We're living in the time of revelation. And so, yes, we could talk about what happened in A.D. 70 and A.D. 300, but we need to be talking about what's happening in A.D. 2020. Because if the book of Revelation does not apply to today, we can just close all of our churches and everything and go on about our business and do whatever we want to do. Because then there's no God, there's no devil, there's no hell, there's no nothing. Oh, but I beg to differ with you. There is a God, there is a devil, there is a hell. And there is a reward for the just and the unjust. And we have to live holy before God. And revelation has as much impact in today's church as it had in the church world 2,000 years ago. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. I see some hand waves coming on the Zoom screen. All right? So verse 5 says, And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. The black horse and rider represent famine. This would certainly come about when war and violence produces economic stress. The balances or scales are for measuring quantities of food. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. A penny represents a day's wages. Can you imagine what you make in a day? You'd have to spend it on a loaf of bread. Can you imagine that? Let, let's say you make $15 an hour. And you work an eight-hour shift. That's $120, right? My man is correct. It's $120 a day, right? Can you imagine spending the majority of that on a loaf of bread and a gallon of milk? Because food is so scarce. So scarce. That they're rationing it out to you. They'll take the scales or a cup and fill it up. Just, can you imagine just being able to get this much meal? Just enough to fill up this cup. Or just that much flour. You know? And then they tell you, okay, you got one cup or eight ounces. I think this cup is about just under 12 ounces. 12 ounces of meal or 12 ounces of flour. That would be $89. Okay? $89 for just a cup of this. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? Now, watch this. Again, the book of Revelation is a revolving book. It's an evolving book, rather. Evolve. Which was, which is, and which is to come. For other time periods, oil could have reference to olive oil. But in our day, we have to consider petroleum and crude oil. It is that oil that impacts our economy the most. The warning to not hurt the oil is real. If you notice, whenever there's a Middle Eastern conflict where the majority of our oil comes from, the price of oil goes up. As long as there's some semblance of calm over there, you know, our gas prices can go down. 
But the minute something happens over there, oil prices start going up. So the word here, that's what I'm saying. You can't stick revelation in AD 100 or AD 75. You got to bring revelation to 2020. And we're living in days and times now where olive oil is not an issue. Most of us, when we use olive oil on, we bring it to church, we pray over it, and we anoint people with it. Some people cook with it. But most of us don't cook with olive oil on a regular basis. So what oil would it be talking about to us? Again, crude oil, petroleum oil, you know, and and listen, it's still at a premium. Uh, every generation is challenging the administration. You all need to find more ways uh, so that we don't have to rely on fossil fuels. So we don't have to rely on this petroleum oil, this crude oil. They need to come up with more sustainable energy. And da, 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 da. Everybody's saying it. But at the end of the day, they're still not going to get away from that oil right now. Those are those Middle Easterns, the Saudis, who are multi, multi billionaires of the amount of oil that is sold around the world. That's how we fuel our cars. We put oil in the engine. Then oil is used to make the gasoline. We are so dependent on oil. We have people who still use oil for their furnaces. All these kinds of things. And so... The word went out. Don't hurt the oil. If you hurt the oil, food is already the premium. If you hurt the oil, what's going to happen then? Can you imagine paying $15 for a gallon of milk? Can you imagine if you wanted a chicken? Love that chicken and Popeyes, right? Can you imagine going and getting a two-piece and a biscuit? And it cost you $17? Some of us will be trying to steal chickens. Some of us, and hey, listen, there's no need in playing here. Y'all need to be real with me tonight. Some of us will actually be tempted to steal. If we could not afford the prices that they were charging us. Uh, maybe somebody could unmute and tell me because I, I don't eat beef anymore. So it's been a long time since I bought a steak or anything of that nature. Uh, I used to love prime rib, but I just don't have any taste for beef right now. But what is, uh, a, let's say, a, a T-bone or porterhouse steak? What would it be maybe per pound? Anybody know the answer to that? Somebody says $7.99 a pound? Somebody says $7.99 a pound for a porterhouse or a T-bone? Oh, my. Good Lord, that's a lot of money. Maybe somebody on Facebook got another, you got another price. Maybe you get your meat from somewhere else. If you do, send a note and so we can know what that is. But imagine if you wanted a steak. Now, I do know there are restaurants that will charge you $100 for a steak. But that's not where you're going to go if you're trying to eat at home and trying to preserve your money. But imagine, okay, so imagine that $100 steak. Imagine what it would be in the time of this kind of economic stress. So imagine you just want to go get a pork chop or a steak or a lamb chop. Can you imagine? What's really interesting, if you notice in this particular passage, meat, meat is not even mentioned. It really won't even be a factor because the animals are going to be dying too. So only what the economy can grow from the ground is going to be at an issue. Because the animals are being killed or they're dying from whatever's going on in the earth. And so people pretty much are going to be eating bread and finding whatever water they can find. These are going to be some difficult times. Now, some of these times have already existed, but they could very well play out again if we're not careful. All right? Verse 7, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth 
to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. The last of the four horsemen is the pale horse, representing death. And the word for hell is the grave, or Hades, which means the grave, place of confinement. The many facets of death are introduced. A fourth part of the earth succumbs or is affected through murder, starvation, just general causes, and even animal attacks. What would be some of the general causes of death? That's when you start dealing with sicknesses and pestilences, COVID-19, cancer, AIDS, all these things that don't necessarily even have to have a name. Any pandemic you want to mention, any epidemic you want to mention that leads to death. That's why you notice the word says, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword. That's murder. And with hunger, starvation, people starving to death. And with death, death killing. In other words, death has many facets. All kinds of sicknesses, all kinds of diseases. These are things that a person just, it's, it's hard to say naturally, but naturally or even unnaturally dies from. No one, no one murdered them. They were not attacked by anything. Mm -hmm. Just through sickness, they die. Okay? And then there are going to be those that are killed by the beasts of the earth. Think about what's happening to these beasts. They're hungry too. And they're going to begin to attack the human life. And so, all right. When you look at that, then we go to verse 9. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Now, I am very much reminded of the first century saints, the first century church, the early church. And, and even Paul made mention of how he was a great persecutor of the church. But many of them died. They were martyred for their testimony of Jesus Christ. They would not deny the faith. They held on to their righteousness. They held on to their integrity. They refused to deny Jesus Christ. Even when being uh, tormented, they refused to deny the name of Jesus Christ and the power that he had in their lives. I want to know if the 2020 church, if the 2020 church could really suffer for Jesus Christ. We get so angry and so hurt and so disillusioned when people talk about us or when they lie on us. We fall apart if we lose our job, lose our home. We, we lose it. Oh, every oh, the world, my world is crashing in. I'm going through. I'm going through. I'm suffering so much. Bishop, I'm suffering. I don't know what I'm going to do. My husband left me. Oh, my wife has lost her mind. Oh, oh, oh. None of that has anything to do with Jesus. But yet we're going through. We're tormented. We're just full of anxiety. So much anguish in our lives. So much is going on. And nobody's even challenging you whether you're saved or not. Nobody is taking you outside and saying, if you don't deny Jesus, I'm going to cut your head off. Or if you don't deny Jesus, mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot your brains out. Mm -hmm. None of that's happening. We're falling out over the just normal day-to-day -day life. None of this has anything to do with our life in Christ. The devil, the devil, the devil, he's doing this to me, he's doing this to me, he's doing this to me. He's doing that, he's doing that, he's doing that. But it's not about challenges to our salvation. We go to church when we want to or we don't. My wife showed me a, 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 a meme where, where I guess the pastor uh, was asking one of the members about their attendance. And they said, well, Pastor, I, I, I haven't been able to get a ride to church. And he said, you can't get a ride to Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> right there in your home. Right there in your home and people won't come to church. They won't come to Zoom church. Amen. They won't come to Facebook church. But they're going through. They're suffering. They're suffering. And they want to know why they're suffering. Because you left your first love. You've really denied your faith. Well, I love the Lord. You and your glass of wine and you and your weed. You love the Lord. 
People are turning to everything but God and his word. And then they want God to bless them. That's why I preach on Sunday, the power of God's permissive will. So many of us, we live and we dwell in the permissive will of God. God has so much more in store for us. He wants so much more for us than just allowing things to happen. All right? Oh, my. So this group, they're under the altar. And I've often wondered about this, looking at it. And you get older, you ought to get wiser as you get older. So the Lord's revealing even more to me these days about the word of God. And when I thought about it, I said, this group that was under the altar, why would they choose that place? Because remember, the altar that John has seen is the altar in heaven. Why would this group choose that place? All right? The burden is great. And that they want to be avenged for their sacrifice. <clears throat> One of the issues they're having with God. Now, now watch this. This group is already there in heaven. But they have an issue with God. Their issue is simply this. Why is it taking so long for you to avenge our death on those mean-hearted people in the earth? Hmm. Why is it taking so long? They cried out to the Almighty for justice. Their position under the altar is symbolic as well, given they were sacrificed as their Lord and Savior. So they chose the altar to, to lay under because they were sacrifices. They were killed for their testimony. But justice is not denied. It might be delayed. But it's not denied. More suffering would occur to their brother. And he let them know. I, I, I can't do what I need to do or want. Because your brethren, they're going to also be sacrificed. And so until that happens, we have to let this go. What he did in his way of comforting them. He gave them their white robes. It says, and white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. You're going to have to wait on your fellow brethren. They're going to be killed as well. But take your white robe. You've earned it. You've earned it. Verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bond man, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? The sixth seal opened up something uh, universally, not just within the earth realm, but universally. It would seem as though there was asteroids and meteors and all these kinds of things falling to the earth and causing an actual shift in the earth. Islands and things and continents were actually shifted off of their normal positions. And there was such fear. And then something he says, he says that the heavens roll back, which means that it allowed them to just see straight in to heaven and see God. And they became fearful. They were trying to hide from him. They were saying to the mountains and the cave, follow us. We want, we want to die. There's no hope in us living anymore. Our sins have come up before him and, and there's no hope. What a terrible day that's going to be. 
What a terrible day that's going to be. Now, we have nothing in history to suggest that something like this has happened before. So that means to me it's yet to happen. And I don't know about you. My prayer is that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Why did God save Richard E. Patterson Sr.? Why did God save me? Why did he give me a chance? Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you for loving me. He, he could have chosen somebody else other than me. But he chose me. I hope you understand the privilege of being saved tonight. I really do. I, 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 Zoom family, I, 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 listen, go ahead. On the, if you really appreciate the privilege of being Thank saved, why don't you give God some praise right now? Unmute yourself. And Thank let's, you, Lord. Let's have some praise and worship right Thank now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name Thank tonight. You, Lord. Thank you, God. Come on, live stream. Thank you can you, praise Jesus. him right there in your home. Thank you, Jesus. You can lift your hands to the Almighty and give Him praise and give Him worship. Thank you, God. We love you, God. You chose us. Out of all of those that are not saved, even in our own families that are not saved, but God, you saved us. Thank you, Lord, that we heeded the call. Thank you, Lord, that we we answered and responded to you, Lord, at a time acceptable, before it was too late. God, we tonight, we appreciate your sacrifice. We thank you, Lord, that you came. And you gave Jesus. your life for our sin. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Help us, God, to live according to your word. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank we lift you, our Jesus. hands. Hallelujah. We believe your word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. We worship you tonight, God. We praise you tonight, God. We give you glory tonight. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. God will help Thank us to you. endure the day of trouble. Jesus. My dad used to sing a song, Jesus is getting us ready for that great day. Yes. Yes. Who shall be able to stand? Mm. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Hallelujah. Lord. Yeah, Thank you, Jesus. It could have been me laying in some gutter or some street or some crack house with a needle in my vein. And for some of us, we did travel that road. And God in his time called us out of those places, out of those dens of iniquity, out of those places of seeming confinement, thinking that I would never be able to break that habit, never be able to be loose from that bondage. But God broke the yoke off of us and saved us, sanctified us according to his will and according to his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. And to see his face will be a blessing for us. It will be a horror to the sinner, but to those that are saved, the most magnificent. Uh, the songwriter says, we shall behold him face to face in all of his glory. We shall behold him. We shall behold him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you tonight. We bless you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I, I encourage you, don't turn back. Don't turn back. If you've done it before, don't do it again. Don't turn back. Don't turn back. Hold on. Hold on like never before. Hold on like never before. It's, it's, it's just we're living in a season for living for God, for living for him. Just, just hold on to him. Hold on. Amen. Love you tonight. If there are any questions, if there are any questions or comments, 
We will certainly mm-hmm. entertain them on tonight. But I just thank God I, for the opportunity. Amen. God bless your mother. Thank you, Jesus. Just, just, just thank God for the celebration. Just Thank to you, celebrate Jesus. him. Just to love him. Thank you, Lord. Uh, woo, thank you, Lord. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I bless God today. Please pray right now. Mooney? Yes. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. With all that we've yes, God. discussed and all that we've laid before your people tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Satan has no place amongst us. I say to my sister tonight, say yes to the will of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We have a prayer request tonight. Say yes to the will of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Not the will of the flesh, but the will of the Lord. Jesus. We pray, God, that you would intervene, that you would Jesus. intercede. We pray, God, that you would move Jesus and thwart the plan of the enemy. Yes, Give my sister freedom. Thank Give you, her Jesus. deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We thank, thank you, Jesus. Lord, for your divine will. We thank, thank you, God, Jesus. for your sovereign will. We ask, God, that it would take hold and take root in her life. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. Yeah. And we come against the plan of the enemy to destroy her mind, Jesus. her will, her spirit, even her body. Raise her up, God. Give her strength Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Make her whole according to your word. In Jesus' name. We bless you right now. Are there any prayer requests? Any other prayer requests? Jesus. Any other prayer requests? The entire watch family. Amen. Amen. Stephanie family. Amen. Yes. Daddy's family. Yes. Amen. Stephanie family. Thank God for those. Bow your heads with me, God of heaven. Please, Carter. Yes. Every name. Every Jesus. situation. Thank you, Lord. The angels have been Thank you, Jesus. deployed on our behalf. And we ask God that you move according to your word. We bless you right now, God. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the glory and the power and the glory forever. Salvation and glory and honor be unto you. We bless you. We thank you right now. In the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Jesus. We bring our brothers and sisters before you. Yes, Lord. We ask God that you will continue to look on our dear sister Robin Bell. Thank you, Jesus. Deacon Harold Greer. Yes, Lord. We ask that you would look upon the Tyson family. Yes, Lord. And we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, for comfort and strength in this hour. And we plead your blood over all of us. Jesus. That your name may be glorified. That your people may be edified. And that the devil be horrified. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Let every heart say amen. Amen. God bless you all. We love you dearly. Jesus. To our live stream audience, meet us again. On Sunday morning, amen. Got some more prayer requests coming in.
The Miles and Blanchard the family. The Miles and Blanchard family. Janet Mo- Janice Morris. Janice Morris. Doris Young Nobles. Yes, Doris Young Nobles. Yes. Amen. God bless you, Jesus. each and every one of you. Receive that prayer tonight. Thank you, God. Receive it for yourself. Jesus. Amen. The power of God be with you until we meet again. God bless you.